So in the previous episode, I showed you how to uh, create a mathematical model for a network flow problem uh, uh, in which we want to transport cars from some uh, nodes to other nodes, uh, from some cities to, to other cities. So now I will show you how to solve this model in Excel. And there are actually two ways you can approach this, uh, two variants of the model you can use. And I'll, in this episode I'll show you the first variant, which is a, a kind of standard variant for linear programming. So I, I remember I told you that for every linear problem you can uh, create a, a, a linear model in Excel, implemented in Excel, in the same standard format where you uh, list all variables at the top and then we have one line for the objective function and one line for each constraint and, and, and use only some products uh, because all constraints are actually some products of some parameters and variables. So we can solve it here in this way. So fir let's first list all the variables and reserve cells for them. So uh, I'll put here x12, x14 Right? It's a good idea to list them systematically. For example, we will say, let's first list everything, all the variables that are outflows from node 1, x12, x14. Then outflows from node 2, it's x23. Right? Then outflows from node 3, x35. Then outflows from node 4, there's no outflows from node 4, there's only inflows. So outflows from node 5, and in an, in order, it's x53, x54, and x56, x53, x54, x56. From node 6, um, x65, and then from node 7, there are actually three, x74, x75, x76. Right, we should have 11 variables. When I select it here, I should I should see that there is 11, 11 variables. Let's mark, these will be the values of variables which will denote units, right? Number of units or cars transported. Um, <coughs> number of cars transported. Now, um, I, as I said, you should be systematic in listing those in order not to double list or uh, not to uh, forget about one of the variables. So for example, in the objective, it's the, the same logic applies. You could list them in the same way. Um, okay, so we have the variables, decision variables. Now, what we still need to add is uh, the objective, right? So in the objective, we have the cost, cost in dollars. And we, in, and as, as we do this in a standard way, we will just say unit costs here, which are again in the same order, 30, 40, 50, 35, 40, um, 30, and so on. Here, here they are. And now we have to define for the cost, we have to define the total cost. So we'll have a total value here which will be a sum product right it's a sum product of parameters and variables right and then for the variables again I'm pressing a 4 because I want to fix this reference when because I'll be copying this sum product later on right so it's it tells me now it's zero but if I try let's say if I transport 100 cars here I will have three thousand dollar cost and it works I can maybe try one more here to see it also works right so the total cost of course the total cost is a function so let me color it and then uh, of course this is the function will be minimizing there is no right hand side here now um, I, I need now uh, the coefficients for all constraints we ha this is we, we've done the objective we still have to define seven constraints one for each node so let me name those constraints node one node two constraint right we know that this is the flow balancing now I can actually do this drag it down as Excel is smart enough to continue numbering node one to node seven now what are the coefficients for node one you'll see I have to say for x12 I have a coefficient minus 1, it's minus x12, so I'll put minus 1 here. And for x23, which is here, uh, sorry, x14, which is here, I have minus 1, right? This is the, this is the coefficient. Uh, that's all. Now notice that I, 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 
um, formally I should put 0, 0, 0 in all those remaining cells, but because I know um, that Excel treats empty as 0, I can just leave them empty and copy this formula, okay, and paste it, and you'll see it takes some product. Now remember, this has to be some product of all coefficients and all variables, and all that you see here is that it is saying um, it is taking 0 times this, 0 times this, so effectively it is not including these variables x3, 5, x5, 3, x5, 4, and so on, and that's exactly what we want. In, in this constraint we just want minus x12 minus x14, it will be minus 1 times x12 minus 1 times x14, right? So we have the, <coughs> the inflow minus outflow if you want, this is the formula here, inflow minus outflow for node 1, and then we want to say right hand side right hand side will be the supply or demand, right? Demand or negative supply and for this node it is minus 200, right? Let's just, uh, let me just center those so it looks a little bit nicer. Okay, now we did node 1, I need to do the same thing for node 2. For node 2 I have plus x12, so here I will put plus 1 and I have minus x to 3, which is the third variable, so it's minus 1 here, and that's all. And again I have to, right, so I can copy the formula for all seven nodes, okay, and then the, 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 the right-hand sides, I also can write them quickly, right, the right-hand side here is 100, uh, and it actually happens, in this case, this constraint is satisfied with equality, because I just said tentatively uh, I, I will transport 100 cars from node 1 to node 2 so you see and nothing goes out of node 2 nothing. so 100 cars are delivered to Boston and nothing goes out of Boston therefore the net inflow to Boston is 100 and that is correct and that is actually the constraint is satisfied with equality because I will now have uh, 100 cars as needed Right? So I need to repeat the same thing, I can write the right hand sides, so right hand sides are just the bi values, right? You could say the bi values, right? So it will be 60 for node 3, it's 60 here, 80 for node 4, 170 for node 5, 70 for node 6, and minus 300 for node 7. Remember to keep minus when there is a supply Okay, so I have to fill out all those numbers. Now it's a little bit time consuming, so I will do it uh, quickly and continue. Now there is a very quick way you can do this without looking at the constraints. If you remember for node 3, we can, uh, we can, um, we know that this node, the constraint here, the balance of flow has to take inflow to node 3 and outflow from node 3, right? So we actually have to look at index 3 in all those variables and when there is index, there isn't here, there isn't here, there is here. If there is, we look, is it first? If it is first, this is outflow, it will be minus 1. If it is second, it's inflow, so it will be with plus 1. So here 3 is, right, in this case 3 is with a plus, so I'll put, uh, sorry, it's an inflow, so I put it as uh, plus 1, and here 3 uh, it's 3 something, so it's an outflow, I'll put minus 1, and then here it is an inflow, so I'll put, put, put plus 1, and there is no other uh, variable related to x3 to, to node 3, and you'll see this is actually x23, x53, minus x35, that's exactly what we have here in this constraint, and then greater than or equal to 60, that's what we want to have. So you can write those constraints, let's take note number 4, there is 4 here as an inflow, so I'll put plus 1, no 4, no 4, no 4, here there is 4, so here I will put, this is also an inflow, and here there is also an inflow for note number 4, and again you'll see this is the same as x14, x54, x74, we'll write this here, so I'll fill out all the constraints this way. Now, once I do it, I can I can actually do a little check because I told you this this uh, the set of constraints has a special structure here. Remember, I told you every variable in this set appears twice. This is variable x12. It appears in two constraints: once with coefficient minus one, once with coefficient one. We can actually check if, according to what we did, we have this property satisfied. If we don't, that means there is a mistake somewhere. So there is a minus one one, minus one one, minus one one 
1 minus 1, 1 minus 1, minus 1, 1, 1 minus 1, 1 minus 1, 1 minus 1, 1 minus 1. So we can see at least the, the property is satisfied. Uh, so we, we didn't detect a mistake here, right? We might have still a mistake, but of another type. Maybe we put one of those coefficients in the wrong place. But I believe, at least to the best of my knowledge, the model is now correct. So I can try and solve it using Excel Solver. So I'll try to go to the total cost go to data and click solve and now in the solver window here I'm going to I'm going to select as minimize this function m3 is my total cost by changing the variables which are here and subject to the constraints and now because you see all the constraints I said inflow minus outflow greater than or equal bi I have bi's here I have the inflow minus outflow here so I'll say all those seven, right, each of them separately must be greater than or equal than each of those separately. I'm entering seven constraints in one line. This is a much faster way than entering them one by one. But what I mean by this, that each of those numbers must be greater than or equal uh, to each of those numbers. And what this does, of course, is it makes sure supplies, because it says this is um, a negative, uh, this is, uh, this constraint is kind of multiplied by minus one. So if we say this greater than or equal to this, we're actually saying the total uh, supply taken from this node must be less than or equal to 100. And then total demand here must be satisfied at least greater than or equal 100, greater than or equal to 60, and so on, and less than or equal 300. Okay, we still want to add the second constraint, which is here at the bottom, we say non-negativity, so we select all variables greater than or equal to zero. We click OK. I'll uncheck this box. I select simplex LP and I can now try and solve this model. Let's see if it works. So solver found a solution. All constraints and optimality conditions are satisfied. That means we have an optimal solution. So we see now how many cars are transported right, of, on every connection and we can try to actually uh, detect what we transport were. So, so look at what happens. W we transport 120 cars from Newark to Boston, right? And we transport the remaining 80 to Richmond, right? So we're actually transporting exactly 200, and you can see this in this balance in node 1, we're actually transporting exactly 200 from Newark. If you look at node 7, right? Uh, for node 7 we see, these are the transportation variables for node 7, we transport 210 to node 5 here to Atlanta and we transport 70 to node 6. Actually 70 is all the uh, mobile needs but 210 is more here than, than we need. We probably transport, uh, transport somewhere uh, um, uh, further those units and, and as you can see the total trans cars transported from Jacksonville are two, 280 right why is that because if you remember we had 500 total supply and only 480 total demand and this is where the difference is showing now the difference was 20 units there were 20 units extra above what is demanded and then Jacksonville is actually not delivering those 20 units 20 units stay in Jacksonville this is okay and model chose it based on the cost minimization right and you can actually check that every node by this node uh, flow balance you can see that every node receives exactly as uh, the, the number of cars that it needed right and that this one ships 200 and this one ships 280 out of the 300 available and you can see that for every node the balance is satisfied so we have the solution and as I told you if you remember we were thinking does these con to these constraints for demand nodes uh, do they have to be of the greater than or equal sign or can we write them equal? You see in the optimal solution those values are equal to those so if you put those five constraints equal those um, right equal sign here in those five constraints you would get exactly the same solution there was no impact.